So how are you able to pay for it? I've been my carpet jobs. So you're working three jobs: carpet installation, fireman, and here. Yeah. Got it. Why is he? He's working three jobs. One of them is a fireman. What's up, guys? It's your boy Alan again, back with another video, and today we're gonna watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and uh, let's go check this out. What are you drinking, hon? You know, I'll have a Guinness. Guinness? Okay. Watch how they pour that Guinness. See if they do it correctly. She hasn't even let the Guinness settle. She's yeah. actually just topping. She's not pouring it right. <laughs> of all the things you can do in the Irish pub, you gotta know how to pour a Guinness. For starters, you gotta pour it at an angle by pulling the tab towards you, and then you let it sit. Uh, let the glass sit for a while until the nitrogen bubbles start to settle, and then you uh, top off the, the top of the drink by pushing the, the draft like, forward. But she just skipped all those steps. Do you know what you want to order? You know, I think it'll be a little boring and get some cheese sticks, cheese sticks? to start. Thank you. It's ice cold. Oh, ice cold? It's not cooked all the way and it's frozen. Well, how do you mess up just reheating frozen food? Do you not like the cheese sticks? They're like a little greasy and cold on the inside. Have you ever been to Magiana's? It's the best cheese stick I've ever had. So he's telling us about how great another restaurant is. Wait, is he the owner? He's... He's not even addressing the problem? Just sitting next to her? Scott? Do you know where Billy went? I don't know. So Billy's the chef. I believe that... How does the chef disappear? Oh my god, this episode just started. It's our chef sitting out there smoking. What has he got in his hand? Is that a spatula in his I hand? I think it is, yes. Oh, oh that... so he's smoking with... This is like... Health cold violations in public daylight. It's not a spatula. It's a cat litter scoop. Oh, what's he doing with the ashtrays? Oh, he's cleaning the ashtrays. The ashtrays. You are Before joking. he goes in to cook the food. Why is he scooping cigarette butts? <laughs> There's like a lot more questions here. What was he? Why is he doing this? This is unbelievable. Oh, go oh. ahead. Oh. So he's got customers that are sitting outside with him. Watch it. They can see him do this. Why is he doing this? Scott, Scott Schirmenberg. John Taffer, Scott, nice yeah, to meet you. Very Pleasure. nice to meet you. This is my wife, Nicole. And you did a great job, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Scott, I want to... <laughs> Has he never seen the show? What happened was, you know, naturally doing something like this costs a lot of money, so I had to reel in a couple other partners. And how much money did you put in? 130000 Tommy, my uncle, put in 160000 And Greg, he's my cousin. One hundred and five. Wow. How yeah, that's like a disaster. <laughs> Not just borrowing money, but borrowing money from your relatives. Like I said before, it can work, but it usually doesn't. We're talking about families getting torn apart over lawsuits, over money, things like that. How much are we losing a month? I just, last month we lost $8,000. So how are you able to pay for it? I've been, my car. How is he losing $8,000 a month? Losing eight thousand dollars? Carpet jobs. So you're working three jobs: carpet installation, fireman, and here. Yeah. Got it. Why is he? He's working three jobs. One of them is a fireman. That's insane. That a fireman who's supposed to do these long shifts, you know, being on call. And what if he doesn't get enough sleep and just falls asleep during a fire alarm? We got these loans through the credit card processing companies. It's like doing business with the mob. Uh, they give you an advance of X amount of hours. They then take a percentage of your credit card bills to pay themselves back. Right. You're paying about 30% interest. That is loan sharking, but it's legal loan sharking. This isn't just one loan that I got. This is like the fourth. With the loan. Wow, he just, this debt just climbing and climbing. Why even have this bar if it's just costing you so much money? It's to a point where he not only has to borrow money from loan sharks, but he has to work two other jobs. Why not just close the bar? That's probably the best decision for him. How are your uh, two partners dealing with that, everything? Have you had an open frank discussion with them? No. The fact is they're all- How are you losing $8,000 a month and not talk to the, the other owners? And they have no clue? Let's start in the bar, okay. Peter. Glassware? Where's the glassware stored? Right there. All stacked up. See this humidity? Dude, they don't even have time to dry when they're stacked like that. When's the last time this was emptied and actually cleaned out? These fridges haven't been... Oh! How is this possible? Like, shouldn't they know something's wrong when it takes a while to, like, 
you, when you gotta drag the doors open like against that slime. So when I come in here and I can do this, this is actually mold that starts to build on the outside of here. So oh, how do you have visible mold on the refrigerator? Like the surface of the refrigerators. What is this? Uh, it's just flour cage in for our pickles. Okay, so do you guys think maybe that would be mushrooms from November 29th? Oh, would you want to eat out of that? No. What? This is bacteria. This is a five minute project at the end of a shift. Inside of the reach-ins, there's a... Dude, that's insane. Yeah, like you said, it doesn't take, it only takes a few minutes to wipe that down. It takes like months or not, if not years, for that kind of bacteria to build up like that. This is your laziness. That's, that's grease. Look at this. This is off of your back walls, man. This is why you're... Dude, that's a fire hazard. Scott, I wanna ask you a question. Do you think he's a good employee? He's got passion. Passion for what? Putting out a good product. Really? Yes. On that grill? This kitchen was disgusting. The fryer was filthy. There was thick grease all over the walls. Billy's not a great employee. He's a lazy slob. You make a- Dude, it's not just lazy and not passionate. It's a fire hazard at this point. And he can also get people sick. Like he served John Taffer's wife cheese sticks that were still frozen. That means he didn't cook all the way. Like what if it was like a meat product that had to be cooked all the way and not just being reheated? I don't care how good you are, I'd fire him right now. I got the right guy here, I, I, I promise. I'm not sure of that. <laughs> Why is he defending him? Like I'd be pissed if I was paying somebody and then finding out that they weren't like leaving this place into a hazard. Billy, when I come back here, I want to see this place clean. I suggest you clean this place all night. And if you don't change your choices, you're not gonna work here anymore. It's time for me to take responsibility or just get the hell out of the way. It's your mess, clean it. The next morning, John's first order of business is to inspect the kitchen. Oh yeah, I was here all last night. I'm ready to show up the kitchen. Everything is really scrubbed hard, all the top to bottom. Excellent, I'm impressed. Billy stepped to the plate. Kitchen is real. That's pretty impressive because he's just one person. Like the other episodes, they had a whole crew, you know, clean up the kitchen. But yeah, he owned up to his mistakes and cleaned the whole kitchen by himself. So that's very, very impressive. Talk to me about management for a moment. When I'm here, I play manager. So are you a supervisor? We entrust her, without a doubt. So does she have the authority to fire an employee? She doesn't have the authority to fire an employee. <laughs> then she's not a manager. Yeah, you can't be a manager if you're not allowed to manage. Well, let's start rocking and rolling. This is called a mandolin. Have you guys ever seen one before? There's a tremendous... How do you have a kitchen staff that no, but none of them have ever heard of a mandolin? <laughs> so separate of the money owed to the three of you, what other monies do we owe? There's one thing I just want to talk about to make sure that they know about is this credit card loan. Are you guys aware of these? No. Okay, were you aware of that? No. Yeah. So they don't have any idea of all these shady loans that he's been doing to keep this business alive. Who's gonna run this? Can this work under Scott's leadership? No. Can this it's work under- It's just under a matter of time. I wanna bring somebody in here who knows what they're doing to bring us the money. All right. For a general manager? And paying them what? What are you gonna pay somebody to run this bar? Until we find an equation that works, we're gonna have to figure it out. I did not want to be involved in the business end of it. I, I don't- So. How are they running this place with no general manager? Like one of the owners is on site, but he's like not doing anything. Why are you trying to open a bar and you have no money for it to not only hire a general manager, but you don't even have the funds. I mean, you're not even making money. So what's the whole point of this owning the bar? Just, <laughs> just, make, just run a bar in your basement. The eager crowd is herded into the black sheep and the orders pour in. 45 minutes. I've been waiting 45. Oh, 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 oh. glasses right now. It's taking How do they not have glasses? Or are they just not being washed? No. We had enough goddamn no. glasses. Have... Have... You had enough glasses. No, we did have a <laughs> Irish boy. Get out of my bar. Dude, I'll tell you what. I'm going to punch each other out in a minute. Out of my bar. I'm telling you this ain't your bar. <laughs> What's going on? He's threatening violence on someone that's trying to help him? Well, Tommy was screaming at me. I said, just because you can't manage your bar, it's not our fault. Tommy totally lost his cool tonight. This was a stress test and he failed. 
Yeah, it's like, it's called a stress test. And why is he behind a bar if he's not gonna help the bartenders? Billy is a great cook. He really does a great job. But Scott didn't know where the food was going. The checks just came into the kitchen, the guys cooked it, and then it sat there. Who are we going to? Table six. See, if this is what happens when you try to skimp out on money by not hiring a manager. Like, none of these guys have experience. You have a guy behind the bar who doesn't know how to bar back, who just walked out of the set, and now you have another owner who's trying to expedite food, but he has no expediting, no kitchen experience. I don't know who ordered what. <laughs> don't know who ordered what. It should be on the tickets. They ordered this. <laughs> It's not even the right table. Table six was missed, so we gotta figure out where we messed up. Where's our order for table six, Scott? Order that. That's our food. We've been here for at least an hour. I've seen our food walk by this, our table twice now. One hour? How is he waiting for more than one hour? This is just bar food. Most of it is fried. It should be super fast. What's up? This is round two for table six. What else is going out there? That's it. That's table six. That's it? I don't think that's it. Back there, it was just kind of a cluster. How is one table keep getting all these messed up orders? Don't people write things down? Like, what does the ticket say? I know, I, I'm pretty sure this is wrong. Definitely not. Two burgers and the spring rolls, right? These owners are a disaster. Table six got the wrong food a second time. Dude, like it's like the same tables. The same tables are getting the wrong orders multiple times. I'm done, you see this? This is the white towel. You blew it. Shut it the hell down. Everybody listen to me, please. I've been doing this for 35 years. For the second time in my entire career, I hold up the white flag. Food is coming out in an hour, and people still don't have a drink. Man, that sucks. There's just not enough experience here. Nobody has experience. The kitchen doesn't have experience. They don't even know what a mandolin is. And then now you have owners who have no restaurant experience, and they don't want to hire a manager. Like, I could not even have, like, this is, like, not even surprising. What are you guys going to do? How do we run this thing? I think the failure last night was completely on our shoulders. So there will always be an owner here? Always is a lot. I mean, to be realistic. I, I want to be realistic. We're going to have good managers. I think that's a good choice. I was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they can't just be there all the time, especially when they don't know what they're doing. When I went around this town, there was a same this year that we talked about. And everybody has Guinness, but nobody has the perfect Guinness. I want you to be certified Guinness pourers. You're going to tour the Guinness brewery? Three of you are going to go to Ireland. <laughs> and you're going to leave tonight. Get a field trip in this? You guys ready to see your new bar? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, oh man. So nice. That is awesome. That sign looks so much better than the other one. The other sign doesn't make any sense. Oh! 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 The expo window that we have now um, with the new printer, it's a necessity. Yeah. Oh crap, they got a printer now. So yeah, a POS system with a printer, it, it might cost a little bit more money, but it makes service so much more smoother. Because when you start writing things on paper, when things get hectic, you might not be able to read each other's handwriting. And you also you can also look up orders in the computer that might have gotten lost if it was a real piece of paper. <laughs> Holy <laughs> Welcome to the beer garden. <laughs> wow, yeah. that patio looks amazing. Earlier, nobody was, it was just a smoking area, and now they turn it into like a real, like a beer garden. Guys, nobody has a deck like this in this whole town. 48 seats. This beer garden's worth about $200,000 a year. That is too freaking cool. Dude, that's insane. Like, they had this big area in the back, and they never used it. That's like so much money that was not being made. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave it on the comment section on what I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.